Welcome back to Code Station 33. I am your instructor, Mr. McLaughlin, and today we are going to dive deeper into Arduino and introduction to programming. So let's get started. So today we're going to focus on variables. First, the question, what's a variable? Well, a variable is a container, really. It holds information in sort of like a box. And that box has a name on it. And we can put any kind of information inside the box. Now, the bigger box holds bigger information. So we can't just make any size box. We are have limited to very specific size boxes. We also have to make sure when we name our variables, when we give them our names, we make sure the variables are unique within the same scope. And we'll talk more about that later. But we also have to make sure that uh, we keep the correct case, which means capitalization matters. So if we have a capital M, let's say in our variable, we have to make sure we always use a capital M in that variable, otherwise, Arduino will think they are two different variables, which could become problematic later if we mean for them to be one variable. So let's talk again about this box. Memory in your Arduino, in fact, memory on any computer is limited, but especially in your Arduino. When you're looking at your Arduino, the type of information that you're storing in the box is going to dictate the size of the box. So when we create a variable, we declare the type. We tell the code what kind of thing we're gonna put inside the box. So for example, we might put a number in the box called an int, that's the type. You might know this word from math, it's called integer, and it defines the size of the number that's gonna go into that box. Now the integer in mathematics can be an infinite size, but in computer science, we limit the size of an integer to the biggest value being to two to the 31st and the smallest value two to the negative 31st. Now that might sound like that's a huge number. It is, but after a while, we often need numbers that are bigger than that. In fact, YouTube at one point got caught where they had a user get a certain number of likes that was bigger than two to the 31st and they ended up crashing YouTube. So sometimes we do get big numbers in different circumstances. So the way we declare a variable and initialize it is we use the word um, that declares the data type, which in this case would be int, I-N-T, or maybe double, or long, or short, or any other kinds of different data types, different size boxes. Then we have to give a variable name, and we wanna make sure the name makes sense. We don't wanna pick a variable name like uh, monkey if we're talking about an LED light. That wouldn't make any sense. So maybe we wanna call it LED pin or something that makes sense. And then we have an equal sign, and then we put the value that's appropriate for the data type inside the box. Finally, we have to end with the semicolon. The semicolon is extremely important. It is another source of errors. We talked about this in the last video, but capitalization and semicolons become very uh, important and cause lots of errors if you don't use them properly. And we'll keep reminding you of that. So let's take a look at some variable examples. This is a variable. Here is the data type, int. The variable name is called switch case. And we're using a kind of weird way of writing the variable name. It's actually like two words, but we don't want to use any spaces in variable names. And we can't start any variable names with numbers. We can start with a letter. So we're starting with a lower case S in switch, and then we're using a capital S so we can see that it's a different word. So switch state lets us know that it's two words and it looks like it's two words. 
This is often called camel case because it kind of looks like a chemical camel. It has a hump there in the middle. Then we're assigning it a value of one. And again, we have our semicolon. So that's one example. Now, we also don't have to initialize the variable immediately. We could just declare it. Sometimes we want to initialize, we, we want to declare the variable, but not set up with a value yet because maybe the value is coming from somewhere else and we don't want to put a value in there. So we declare it by saying it's an int. Again, that's the size of the box. Then I have my camel case again, switch state off. Now the default value, and my semicolon, the default value is zero. You'll notice that I also have my comments here again, which should be backslashes, not forward slashes. That's a mistake. Um, those comments happen to be at the end of the line. That's another way of commenting. You can write comments right at the end of line of code. So let's talk about variable scope. Variable scope we had mentioned before is the variables are declared within their curly brackets. There are two kinds of scope. There is the variables that are declared at the top, which is called global. So if we are outside of any curly brackets and we're at the top, that's global. And that means anything can use those variables. They exist for everywhere inside the program. Then there's local, which means it only exists within the method that it was created. So why would we bother with these two different kinds of variables? Well, the main reason is memory. See, if we declare something global, when the program runs, that memory space stays throughout the program, no matter what else is going on. So we have now removed that memory from the rest of the Arduino microprocessor. It can't be used for anything else. If we declare the variable locally, that means once the method has finished running, then the variable disappears from memory. The space is released. Uh, sometimes we call that garbage collection in, in computer science. So let's take a look and see an example of what this might look like if we look at scope. So we see up here, we have our global variables. We have int switch state, which is declared but not initialized. We have int LED pin and we're setting it to 13. Remember the 13 is the LED pin for our LED on our board. So that might be useful to declare in the beginning and allow that to happen anywhere in the program. So we can use that anywhere. But then down here in our loop, I have a variable called my variable and I assigned it a value of two. That means my variable is only used inside this loop. So it gets created and then destroyed and then created and then destroyed and it's not sitting constantly in memory. The other thing I can do is suppose I want to create another variable called my variable as well up here in setup. I can do that and they can be two different variables. They will not be connected even though they have the same name. Uh, my variable could be three and it's not connected to this one because it gets destroyed as soon as we finish the setup loop. It's not there anymore. So even though they have the same name, they don't get the same value. And if you change one, since the other one gets destroyed when the method is over, then uh, you're not affecting the other one. And we'll talk more about scope later on as we do more complicated structures. The other reason why we want to keep our scope appropriate is really just because it makes the code more readable. It lets the user know and anybody else who's looking at your code that you intend for this variable to only be used in a particular method. You could easily declare everything as global and just assume there's enough memory to handle it, but that's not good code structure. It's not good style. So if you need help with your code at some point in the future, someone might need to see what your code looks like and it's easier for them to understand the structure of your code if you use proper style. They expect variables that are declared within a particular method 
to stay within that method and not be used anywhere else. They expect global variables to be used everywhere throughout the program. So it should be used repeatedly in the program and uh, sometimes they don't even change value. So that's it for variables. Um, we will move forward and start creating some more interesting things in the next lesson. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.